I've jumped over to InDesign and I want to take a minute to demo a couple of the keyboard shortcuts that were covered in the lecture. I am by no means going to go through every single one individually, but you can. You have the list. Just open up InDesign, create a document that has, in my case, a bunch of circles that I'm going to pretend are gumballs. And then just click through all the different keyboard shortcuts and modifiers that are included in the lecture. And then before I forget, the lecture by no means also by no means covers all of the keyboard shortcuts and modifiers. There are thousands of keyboard shortcuts and modifiers for InDesign. There's more for Photoshop, more for Illustrator, etc. So some of the basics that work across multiple programs are Command or Control C for Copy, X for Cut, V for Paste, Z for Undo. Um, you can open a new document, so we could do Command N for a new document. You can do Command O to open an uh, existing document. Command S will save. Command, uh, um, Command Q will quit out of the software program. Command C will copy. So let's get started. So I want to show you, maybe I'm making a gumball machine and I'm making all the gumballs, but I need more. So if I need more gumballs, you can select an existing gumball, do Command or Control C, and then Command V, and you'll get more gumballs. You can move them into place, select a new gumball, Command or Control C, and then Command or Control V. Um, a modifier for this, so another even shorter, easier way to do this, is if you hold down the Option key, you can see that the cursor changes to a white and a black cursor. When you have that, you can click and drag. So select an object, press the Option key, click and drag, and then you can make as many copies of that one shape as you want. I think this is the better option in this case. But notice how it's behind the other shapes. If I do Command C and V, it'll sit in front. So there's, there's a benefit to that. Um, you can also launch the go to page dialog box by doing Command J. So if you have a 400 page document and you need to jump from page 6 to page 400, you can do it pretty easily by hitting Command J. If you choose Command K, it will launch the preferences dialog box. If you do Command G, it will group. In order to group something, you have to select multiple things. So if I was done my gumballs and now I'm going to design the outer shell of the actual gumball machine, I could do Command G to group them. And then now I can move them all in unison if I needed to. You can also launch something called the story editor. Now we haven't learned about the story editor yet, but we're actually going to learn about it at the very end of this lecture. So if you have text in your document, so let's make a text box and use type insert with placeholder text. Um, if you have text in your document and you choose Command Y, oops, make sure you're inside your text box, Command Y, it will launch the story editor. The reason you have to be inside the text frame is because everything that's in this frame or frames that this text is threaded to is now visible in what's called the story editor. And you can edit text aside from formatting. So like let's say that you have um, a newsletter and your article starts on page one and continues on page six and then finishes on page 24 and you're bouncing throughout the document in the design process, you can launch the story editor just to see the text in the order it's going to display. So you can edit the text for continuity, for wording, you can fix typos, and you can use the story editor to do that. So you don't have to scroll from page one to page six to page 24. Some other keyboard shortcuts that you may want to practice are the ones that allow you to switch the tools on the tools panel. So I'm going to undock this so you can see. I have the selection tool selected, and you can see if I hover over, it will tell me that if I press the V key, I can get back to it. So if I switch to the pen tool and I press the V key, it will move back to the direct selection tool. That is helpful if you're trying to be fast with your design. Instead of working on the workspace and then having to take a second and a half to bring your cursor all the way back to the left-hand side, select the selection tool, and then come back and move something, and then move back to the tool, you can do it pretty quickly. Uh, a few that I've just pulled out as examples are if you press the K key, it will take you to the measure tool, which is not a tool that a lot of people uh, use a lot, but if you're wondering how big something is or what the spacing is on something, you can click and drag to make a line. It's not an actual line, it's not a segment, it's just like a hypothetical line, and it will tell you the distance between the two objects. So the distance between the two objects, the width is 3.42. 
And so if I wanted to know what the distance between the pink ball and the orange ball gumball is, you can click and drag until you can touch the orange ball and you can say the distance between the two is 3.14. If you select the P tool, it will take you to the pen tool if you're creating custom vector art, or you can press H for the hand tool. However, um, I am right-handed, so I tend to use my left hand on the keyboard, and I actually think it's easier, no matter what tool you have selected, except for the type tool, to just press the space bar. If you press the space bar, your cursor becomes the hand tool, and then you can use the hand tool to pan around your document. So in that case, I actually find it easier just to press the space bar than to press the H tool because if I press the H tool and I want to go back to the selection tool I then have to press the V tool but if you just press the space bar you can pan around and when you let go whatever tool you had selected is still selected on the tools panel. The last thing that I want to show you I need to ungroup these so I'm going to choose object ungroup or I could use a keyboard shortcut of option shift G to ungroup in InDesign. So I want to show you how to move things back and forth. So if you select an object and you decide that this pink gumball should be in front of the brown gumball, um, you can, we've already learned this in our previous InDesign class, choose Object, uh, Arrange, and then you can bring it forward one gumball at a time, or you can bring it to the front, which will bring it in front of everything else. So Command-Z to undo that. You can also use keyboard shortcuts. So if you hit Command and you use the right and left bracket key, so if I use the right key, it'll start to move forward and move in front. So I'm, I'm clicking and I'm going in front of gumballs, but they are gumballs that the pink one's not touching. But you can keep pressing that until it's in front of all the gumballs. You can keep moving it back until it's in the right position. If you add Shift to it, so if you do Command Shift, it becomes a hard command. So if I use the right bracket, it goes all the way in the front. And if I use the left bracket, it goes all the way in the back. That probably is not earth shattering news to anyone. However, let's say that you wanted to select this yellow gumball, but there's a lot of stuff sitting in front of it. Maybe you have already started to create your gumball machine. and you have, let's put the gumballs in the gumball machine, and for whatever reason you have a fill color on your gumball machine, and let's do this. So I have a tiny, tiny tint on this. Maybe I've also made it somewhat opaque. Uh, there's a new thing. This is not part of this lecture. A newer thing. If you go to Object and Effects, you can launch the Effects dialog box. And you can change the layer blending mode like you would in Photoshop. And so you could do Multiply. Let's hit Preview here. Or Overlay and you can do fancy effects. So let's say that you were doing something, you did some sort of fancy effect because you want it to kind of look like the glass is foggy, and now you have this gumball shape sitting in front of your other shapes. It makes it very difficult to select anything except for the gumball machine because it's sitting in front of the gumball shapes. You can use the command option or control alt uh, keyboard shortcut to move your selected item. So if you do command option and you use the left bracket it will start moving back in your document selecting one item at a time in the order that they were created or the order that they're displayed on your layers panel. And you can go all the way to the back and then you can also use the right bracket key so command option or control alt right bracket key to move forward through the selection. Okay, give some of those keyboard shortcuts and modifiers a try, and when you're ready, move on to the next video.